We have already talked about Lance Armstrong's completely doped experience in the 2001 Tour de Suisse. But his great rival, the German Jan Ulrich, also had a curious and beautiful love story with this World Tour level stage race. Unfortunately for him, the 2006 Tour de Suisse was his last competition as a professional, and with a result that surprised everyone who thought that Ulrich was finished. Do you want to know his story? Without further ado, let the show begin. Just before the video starts, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our new cycling channel, Cycling Rankings, where the cycling content is so doped that you'll wonder how you managed without it. Go on, hit that Cycling Rankings subscribe button, chaps. Now, without further ado, let your show begin. Jan Ulrich had already been in complete decline for two seasons. He had already passed into his 30s, and he was doing so with the worst possible results. In 2005, he could only win a one time trial, curiously, also in the Tour of Switzerland. A competition that he used to go to in order to lose those kilos while preparing for the Tour de France, where he finished third, but losing more than six minutes to Lance Armstrong, and without any real chance of wearing the yellow jersey. Lance retired in that same campaign, which left a question hanging in the air. One that we all wanted to know the answer to. Who would succeed the gringo in the palmares of the most important competition in the cycling world? Armstrong himself had it clear. According to his own words, Ulrich would win the Tour de France and with five or six minutes of advantage over the second classified. The Rostock Panzer was not at his best, but he must have told his friend Lance something to make him so sure of his victory. His former teammate at Telecom Bjarne Ries and director of Ivan Basso's CSE team, however thought that Ulrich would no longer give afternoons of glory in professional cycling, because he knew him, and he knew that he didn't have the winning mentality for the 2006 tour. So the T-Mobile German decided to train hard during the winter, unlike previous campaigns, where he showed up like a fat mule to the first competitions of the year. He seemed to know that without Lance in competition, this year he would have the chance to win his long-awaited second Tour de France and to retire a hero in his country. He didn't make his debut that season until the Tour of Romandie at the end of April, but with a much slimmer figure than usual and with a first objective to get in shape for the Giro d'Italia. It was in that competition that we met Barillo, the monster made in a halfway house between the medical offices of Spain and Italy and who literally crushed his rivals, sending a clear message that he, and only he, would be the number one candidate to win the Tour two months later. However, that statement was quickly called into question on May 18th, only Ulrich's 17th day of competition that season, and two days after transferring blood, like the doped up animal that he had been since practically childhood. That day was a 50 km flat time trial in Pontedra, an ideal distance for a powerful and enduring man like Jan. Ulrich, who had lost a lot of time in the first few mountain days, when he had let himself go, started an hour ahead of the rest of the favourites, and without any time reference, and obviously not in his best form. However, we saw again that young red-headed man who had amazed the world in the 1996 Tour de France, and ten years later, Hulle won the time trial in an authoritative manner. More on fire than James Hunt surrounded by Japanese stewardesses after overtaking Damiano Conego was half a minute behind the T-Mobile rider who flew at more than 51 kilometers an hour on average that afternoon. Ulrich had already become an instant candidate for the Tour de France. Even more so when in the press conference that followed, he assured us that this was simply preparation for the great French round. However, two days later, his undoing began. Operation Puerto in Spain had finally been uncovered to the media. In this police macro operation, the Spanish investigators had discovered how the Canarian doctor, Efemiano Fuentes, known as Ufe to his friends, kept in one of his apartments in Madrid several refrigerators full of blood bags of multiple sportsmen, of which, as always, the cycling ones were transcended, since soccer and tennis are sacred cows in Spain and should never be touched. In those frozen chests, 
There were bags of blood numbered according to the seniority of the clients with Dr. Fuentes. Number one, with the nicknames Jan and Hijo de Rudicio, was without any doubt Jan Ulrich, as identified by the Spanish Guardia Civil. More than two and a half litres of German blood, half of what a body usually moves, were ready for the T-Mobile cyclists to fly in the 2006 Tour de France. And it seems that Ule was one of Fuentes' best clients, or at least one of those who paid the best to have the number one treatments on the market in that epoca. But while the investigation ran its course, so did the season, and the son of Rodicius had a new stop on the roadmap designed by Fuentes, the Tour de Suisse. Ulrich used to frequently participate in this competition, where he had already won in 2004, in order to reduce his tremendous fat accumulated with beer and frankfurt sausages during the winter. Not in 2006. He was already slim. Not at the top level of 1997, but even better than his great year of 2003. What he didn't know was that he would also meet fellow syringe riders who were equally or even more dope than he was and who were particularly dangerous. After several flat stages, the first major selection of favourites took place on the fifth day, a day with the finish in Lugerbad. The victory went to the Swiss Fonak rider, Steve Morabito, a typical guinea pig who took advantage of his country's race to pick up a bit of glory with Floyd Landis' premium gasoline. He was joined by Jan Ulrich and other classics of his time, such as Paolo Bettini and Manuel El Tricky Beltran. However, in this small group of favourites came two monsters that would surprise even the son of Pevenage himself, the Spaniard Caldo Gil of Maxine Saunier Duval and the German of Manolo Sizes Worth team, Jorge Jaske. The following day, a mountainous day with the finish in La Punte was one of the most important days of the race. Caldo Gil surprised all on sundry and with a tremendous breakaway, he won the race with 36 seconds over Jaska himself and 40 seconds over his compatriot Jan Ulrich. Incredible. That Spanish climber who in Sonia Duval was getting to know his new superpowers was the leader of the Tour de Suisse with one day of mountains and the final time trial to go. That mountainous day ended in victory for another rider from Worth, the then young Alberto Contador. You know, the same fella who had never met Dr. Ufe Fuentes, and whose entourage claimed that the initials AC on one of the Spanish doctor's bags belonged to another cyclist, Tony Collum. Heel on this occasion could not leave Ulrich or Jaska behind, and they crossed the line together in a small group of favourites. Fortunately for our protagonist of today, the T-Mobile team swept the last time trial with three of its riders in the top seven of the race and with a new and uncontested victory for the Panzer of Rostock, 22 seconds ahead of Cadell Evans and 1 minute and 14 seconds ahead of Caldoch Hill, who lost the yellow jersey on the last day. Ulrich had achieved his goal. He won the Tour de Suisse and presented himself as the great alternative to Barrio for the Tour de France. Unfortunately for him, that was his last competition as a professional cyclist and also the last of the year for his podium companions, also identified in the Operation Puerto. The UCI literally banned the participation of the cyclists identified by the Guardia Civil in the Operation Puerto for the 2006 Tour de France. Although they were on the starting line the day before, Oscar Sevilla, Francisco Mancebo, Joseba Bellocchi, Barillo and Jan Ulrich were directly expelled from the race before the start. For the German, it was the darkest day of his sporting career. Perhaps the moment, like Marco Pantani in his day, when he decided to give it all up and started on a spiral of drugs and alcohol that almost ended his life recently. Ulrich may have been well and truly banned for his doping practices, but let's think about it for a moment. Who won that 2006 Tour de France? None other than Floyd Landis. And as the man himself says, why is it that in Germany confessed cheaters like Rolf Aldag or Eric Zabel are respected and their greatest champion, Ulrich, is still treated like human scum? The hypocrisy of the cycling world may it never cease to amaze you, dear friends. I hope you enjoyed the last doped up dance of Ulrich, who decided to retire the following year 
after learning of his sanction for involvement in Puerto. See you in the next video, folks.